Hello viewers. In this session, we are going to calculate the microwave losses in microwave communication link. Let's start with calculating the receiving power level at the receiving antenna. So the receiver power is calculated as the difference between the transmitted power and the path loss. Okay, how path loss works? So we'll see the single dimension graph here. Okay, so this is the graph. It is plotted against the power. Uh, power level in the vertical axis okay so if, if you look at it uh, uh, the power level will start for for example it start from 0 dBm and uh, this transmitted power we set it here in the modem and then it goes to the um, uh, goes to the microwave antenna where uh, the antenna has a particular gain depends depends upon many factors so the signal will be boosted it so the signal strength is increasing and then it is radiated into the atmosphere. While the signal is traveling in the atmosphere because of free space losses, the signal power level is keep on decreasing for a while until it reaches the receiving antenna. The receiving antenna boosted the signal strength. So the signal level, signal power level is increased further and then it will be given to the receiving modem. This is how the power chart works in a microwave link. Okay, let's calculate the losses here. So the losses here is uh, we, are, we are summing up the free space losses, branching losses and antenna feeder losses. Now. And then uh, we are subtracting it from the gain of the antenna at A end and the B end. Okay, We have seen a term called branching losses. What is it? Branching losses is a summation of many losses. That is IF cable losses, connector losses, waveguide losses. And if we use splitter, then we will calculate the splitter losses also. Let's uh, discuss about fade margin. So what is fade margin? Fade margin is nothing but the difference between receive signal level and the receiver sensitivity. Okay, receive signal level we use to get it from the receiver. Now what is the received power level? Okay, and what about receiver sensitivity? Receiver sensitivity is nothing but the minimum power level required by the receiver so that it can able to success, successfully deconstruct or decode the baseband signal from the incoming traffic. No? Okay, so that is the minimum uh, minimum power level or receiver sensitivity. Okay, this value was uh, keep on changing against each modulation techniques. No? Okay, this value is depend on vendor also. So, so if you refer the vendor chart, they will give the receiver sensitivity for uh, each and every modulation techniques. Now. Okay, for example, for calculating purpose, my receive signal level is minus 40 and my receiver sensitivity according to vendor chart is minus 80. So the difference between these two is 40 dBm. So this is the fade margin of that particular link. Okay. So then we have come up with an another term called effective fade margin. In the effective fade margin, what we are doing it, uh, apart from calculating the fade margin, we are subtracting this value from the interference level. So why, uh, what is the interference level? Obviously, uh, a microwave link is surrounded by a lot of many other microwave links in the nearby area. So the same frequency might be used in some other links also in that particular area. So it may create an interference with the uh, with our particular link. So for example, uh, a nearby link which is having a strong signal, for example, it is having a 10 dB interference level with the intended microwave link, then the effective fade margin is 40 minus 10, uh, that interference level. So it will be 30. So even though theoretically the fade margin is 40 dBm, the effective fade margin is 30 dBm only. So because, uh, because of the interference level. So this, this will be calculated by the tools itself. So we don't worry about it. And then we will calculate how the analog system and digital system behave for, uh, for the uh, BER values and the received power level. For example, analog signals. This is analog signal and the red one is the digital signal. Okay, so uh, as soon as the received power level started increasing, the analog signal also uh, um, uh, decrease, uh, the BR of analog signal also keep decreasing instantaneously. Uh, so, uh, but in a digital signal, it will be in a saturated stage for a while. After getting a good received power level, the SN, uh, BER value tends to decrease it sharply. Now. So, that's the difference between the analog and digital systems. Now. Thank you, viewers.